Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my beautiful sisters. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are well and good. If you're new here, you are absolutely welcome. I really want you to be part of this community, inshallah ta'ala. My name is Fatima G. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I really want to talk about my Salah journey as a born Muslim. So you would think, okay, born Muslim, she's always prayed and so on. But that was never the case for me. You know, um, it took me a while to start praying my Salah. And to be honest with you, I was 19 years old when I really started praying my five daily prayers. So in this video, I'm going to go step by step of um, how and why I started really praying my Salah. And it was all down to one video one video that literally got me praying till this day by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'll share that video with you guys inshallah now let's get into the video alhamdulillah I am born Muslim and being a Muslim is literally one of the biggest blessings in my life I can never ever thank Allah enough for making me Muslim I'm so proud of being a Muslim and I'm so grateful for being a Muslim and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep me firm on this beautiful deen till my last breath and all of us, may Allah keep us firm on this beautiful deen because this is one of the greatest blessings that we have and we must cherish it. We must hold it firm because subhanAllah, there are so many people who were born Muslims. There are so many people who were you know, reverted to the deen and they have left Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that and for us to continue receiving these blessings we can't just sit there we have to do what we have to do to continue this blessing to, to make it easier for us during this journey and one of those things is praying salah praying salah i know a lot of people they just want to get that five minute out of the way but it literally takes time to build that connection with allah and me as a born muslim i never had that connection it was just, oh, Fatima, it's time to pray. Let's go pray. Allah Akbar. And I'm just standing there waiting for the Salah to be over. And that's how it was for me. Ever since I was a child, Salah was always around me. I saw my mom praying. However, my mom never invited me to pray. My mom actually never said, oh, Fatima, come, let's pray. Never. But I always saw her praying. And you know what? Obviously, I talk about Tahajjud a lot in this channel, yeah. I think back, going way back, subhanAllah, the one person that I always saw praying tahajjud was my mom. Allahu Akbar, may Allah accept all of her tahajjud. I remember as a child, I'll be sleeping and all I'll be hearing is somebody praying and I'll wake up and I'll look around and I'll see my mom praying tahajjud. Allah, my mom always used to pray tahajjud. May Allah accept her tahajjud. I mean, come on, I mean. However, she never invited me. And fast forward, I used to live with my grandma. I think I was probably like seven, eight when I started living with her. And my grandma was quite elderly and um, she, my grandma would wake up for Fajr, but then she would have to wake us up because where we used to sleep, I come from like a, um, a poor background. So we used to sleep on the floor and where, where, where we used to sleep, me and my cousin, it was literally the doorway to my grandma's room. So when she would come out to pray, we would have no choice but to wake up. But she needed to wake us up anyway because she was elderly. She needed our help to make wudu. And I'm talking about West Africa, so we don't have running tap. So we had to get like the, in, in Sierra Leone, we call it kula. I would try to find a picture and insert it. It's kind of similar to the one that with the Istinja cup that we all use anyway. But this kula is literally used for, for wudu only. You don't use it for anything else, but you just use it for wudu. So we used to wake up and help my grandma to pray fajr. I was about probably eight years old and I'll be up and helping my grandma to pray fajr, right? And there was one thing that I remember, and I would never, ever, 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 ever forget this. I would never forget it. I cherish it in my heart. There is this man, I don't remember his name. I never learned his name. I never, ever did. I don't remember what his name was. I wonder if my cousin will remember. This gonna... brother, may Allah reward him in this dunya and the akhirah. May Allah make it heavy on his scale. Every morning, he would wake up and would be walking around the streets of where we used to live. Where my grandma lives is called Fuller Town. And this uncle will be going round and will be telling everyone to be shouting, wake up and pray. And there's different ways. And I used to love hearing him. I used to always be excited when he would come by our house. Because whenever he would come by our house, 
my grandma would call him in and give him coffee. Oh, I remember that so vividly. Allahu Akbar. And I used to just admire him. I don't remember his face. I don't remember his name. I don't know. I don't remember anything. But I just remember as a child, just loving the fact that he would come by every single day to wake people up for Fajr. Again, my grandma never invited me to come and pray. She never did. So she just finished praying and then everybody will go back to sleep. So that's how it was. And in my family, no one really prayed. But I have this one cousin. My cousin, um, I used to see him pray all, all the time. When it was Salah, the masjid was literally one minute walk away from our house. So whenever there was Salah time, we would hear the Adhan. My cousin used to go and pray. I remember I used to see him as a young child. I used to see the way he used to make wudu. And I used to just always admire that. But yet again, he never invited me to pray. They never told me, oh, Fatima, come and pray. You're nothing. None of that. It was not something that was forced upon me. We never talked about prayer. We used to pray here and there. When Eid comes, we'll go and pray. Friday, Salah, so every so often, we'll go and pray. So let me tell you guys a quick story. Because I always have a backstory for something, subhanAllah. So I had these two friends, right? I, um, they were sisters. And there was one time we decided to just go and pray. We were all playing and everything. And then all of a sudden, it was Dhuhr. And it was like, oh, let's go and pray. And I was like, okay, fine, let's all go and pray. So we all got ready to go and pray. Bear in mind, I probably didn't even know how to make wudu or anything like that. But we just did what we, we could. When we went to go pray Dhuhr now, we didn't want to leave the masjid. So we stayed in the masjid. Nobody came to tell us to leave. We stayed in the masjid until Asr. And back in Sierra Leone, the, dis the difference between Dhuhr and Asr is like two hours. They pray, they pray Dhuhr at two o'clock and then Asr at four. So we stayed in the masjid for so long. And I remember us just talking about Islamic stuff. Again, subhanAllah, we were talking about death and all this kind of weird stuff. We were 10. They were much older than me. So I would say probably they were like probably two years older than me. So they were like probably 12 or something like that, 13. But we stayed in the masjid just talking about Islamic stuff. And that was so special to me. I still remember that to this day, subhanAllah. So Salah so was always in my face, but I was never told to pray. Now, fast forward to when I came here at the age of 12, I knew instantly that I had to be praying because my dad was practicing, my sisters, you know, they're practicing. So I just knew that we had to pray five times a day. But then again, it wasn't very strict as such. Like my dad didn't call us to pray every single time and of course because we were going to school so Dhuhr and Asr was during um school hours and then sometimes we'll, when we come home we'll pray like um Isha together but we barely prayed as a family anyway but one thing that my dad always did though he always used to ask me have you prayed have you prayed have you prayed but guess what the answers was always yes yes I've prayed even even if I hadn't prayed because you know? I didn't have that connection as a 13 year old, as a 14 year old, I didn't have that connection. You know, I didn't even understand why we had to pray. I was just praying. Again, another story, cause I'm like always stories, <laughs> Fatima with the stories. So there was one time I was probably 13, 14 years old, right? And um, my dad randomly asked me, I think though, he must've heard me try to say the tashahud, tashahud, you know, when you're moving your finger up and down. So he must have heard me try to say the tashahud in Salah and then he, he was probably thinking, what is she trying to say? <laughs> you, because all I was probably saying is rubbish. Sierra Leone, yeah, people do that a lot. When they don't know how to say the tashahud, they just do this, try to whisper something, you know. So he probably heard me trying to whisper something. And after we finished praying, he asked me, what do you say when you sit down like that? And I was honest, I was like, I don't know. And he was so upset with me that I didn't know the tashahud. But hold on a minute. You've never taught me. You've never sat me down to say, you know what, Fatima, today we're going to learn about Salah. So it was something that was never, ever done. Never. So he was really angry that I didn't know the tashahud. And um, he told me to sit there and learn it. And that day, I sat there and I learned the tashahud that very day. Alhamdulillah. I used to go to madrasa, but madrasa was only for two hours. And... I'm going to tell you guys my madrasa story. That one was just, subhanAllah, it was good and bad, but it was more good in madrasa than bad. Because to be honest with you, madrasa really helped me be the, the Muslima I am today. Not from my home, if you know what I mean, subhanAllah. So madrasa, yes, I used to go to madrasa, but I think they probably just assumed that I knew how to pray. They probably just assumed that my, my dad had taught me how to pray salah. So Salah was something that we never really focused on like that. So I didn't learn the Tashahud until that day. Now, 
fast forward my teenage years just went on we didn't pray as a family you know so whenever my dad would ask me are you praying i'll be like sometimes i'll lie be like no nah, i'm not praying clown <laughs> he would always ask me have you prayed for team have you prayed have you prayed and the answer was always yes when i was not praying because there was no connection there was nothing i didn't understand why we had to pray i didn't know that i didn't know why we had to pray five times a day so when you don't understand something you, you don't feel the connection you know so now i went through my teenage years just praying here and there so maybe i will pray zuhur and then isha and then the next day i'll pray maghrib and then the, the rest of the salah i won't pray at all and then there was other days that i wouldn't pray none of the salahs at all and it was normal i didn't feel no guilt i didn't feel nothing subhanallah i was just like okay i'm muslim you know i've got my hijab on i'm never going to take my hijab but i don't pray if you really really deep it i was not muslim during that period because the salah is what differentiate us between the non-muslims so i wasn't praying at all so but i think it was based on ignorance because i didn't know i was never taught i was never told the importance of salah nothing like that so fast forward now when i went to university at the age of 19 and what happened was my favorite sheikh passed away and literally i think the day he passed away was the day i started looking into salah i was at university i was in my in my room and then i heard he passed away and i felt so bad i felt so sad i'm like oh my goodness upon allah if i die now what's going to happen to me i don't pray my salah so it was then that i started looking into salah so i typed in salah on youtube or something like that and i remember the video that got me praying and after watching that video i literally made wudu right and i went to go and pray i'm gonna insert the video somewhere yeah i'm gonna insert it either at the end of the video at the end of this recording or something i'm gonna insert the video inshallah or i'll just put the link down and then you guys can go and watch it the video is probably like 13 years old now something like that yeah it was brother abu bakr islam talking about salah and in this video he was sitting by the stairs and just giving us advice and he was just like i'm not gonna lie, i haven't watched the video for many years now but i remember roughly what he was saying he was like just pray if you're going raving just pray if you're drinking pray if you're sinning pray just make sure you pray your salah because salah will change you eventually you will start changing you will start seeing the changes in you just, just pray and wallahi after that video i went to go and make wudu and i started praying from that day up till now allahu akbar may allah bless that brother abu bakr islam but he doesn't really do those videos anymore i think he's more focused on doing the charity work that he's doing abu bakr islam from roadside to islam and you know um he really, really, really helped me with that video, like subhanAllah, because that video was what really got me praying. And it was just so amazing the way he done the video. He wasn't having a go at us like, don't you fear Allah? What? Okay. <laughs> like, you know, like some brothers nowadays, the way they're so harsh with their nasiha. Nasiha like, does not have to be harsh. Sometimes people just want to hear you just being gentle, but speaking the truth, you know? You don't need to be hardcore. There are some times that people do need that hardcore nasiha. But I feel like when it comes to, especially this generation now, I don't think they need hardcore nasiha. They need like that nasiha that Abu Bakr Islam gave years ago. Because nowadays we see a lot more of that. We see a lot of, you know, born Muslims not praying, born Muslims committing sins openly and so on. And we need someone who they can connect with nowadays to just tell them, if you're raving, pray. If you're listening to music, pray. If you are sinning, pray. Just make sure you pray. Pray. No matter what you're doing, pray. They need that. They really do. But anyways, alhamdulillah, that's really what got me praying my five daily salah. So basically, just to round it all up, what triggered me praying my five daily prayers was my favorite sheikh passing away. Sheikh Salah, rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy upon him. And then that video that I went to go search like Salah and then Allah just gave me that video and I listened to that video and from then I just started praying five times a day and Alhamdulillah since then I haven't looked back. But Alhamdulillah it's a blessing. Not everyone's Salah story is like that. I feel like my one was much straight, was a bit straightforward. I thank Allah for bringing me closer to him through that and um, it's just been a grateful thing you know. 
I have so many stories, subhanAllah, yeah. If you guys want to hear stories on how, because there's, there's stories on how I am the person I am today. There's stories for it. For example, how, how I started practicing the deen, and it was at university as well, subhanAllah. No mom, no dad, just me. I could have gone free and just done whatever I wanted to do, but Allahu Akbar. Allah brought me closer to him during my university years. I started praying five times a day during my university years. Allah really truly guides anyone, no matter where they are in the world. So my beautiful sisters, if you are struggling with Salah at the moment, just know that you are not alone. I was once upon a time struggling with my Salah as well. There are hundreds of people struggling with their Salah. I would advise you, no matter what you're doing right now, like Abu Bakr Islam said many years ago, just pray. Pray your salah. Force yourself. Don't really work on having concentration because sometimes people be like, oh, I don't want to pray because I can't focus. Oh, I don't want to pray because I get distracted. No matter what, that distraction will eventually go, inshallah. So just pray. Start with just praying maybe one salah. Okay, you know what? I'm going to dedicate this week. I'm going to dedicate just praying asr get your asr salah in and then next week you know what i'm gonna pray fajr and asr and then so on work on it slowly slowly learn how to pray properly learn the way the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam prayed and then learn what you're actually saying because for people like myself who don't really speak arabic it's difficult you know because we don't most of us don't know what we're saying so learn what you're saying because when you know what you're saying you feel that connection more and when once you get to the stage where you're actually praying five times a day one thing that really helps me alhamdulillah is literally i think of the day i know subhanallah <laughs> i'm like a big kid i think of the day that allah takes off his veil and when i think of that in salah instant khushu like that's what keeps me going that's what keeps me going especially when i'm in salah that's what gives me khushu now I want to know what, how you work on your khushu. How are you able to keep your khushu for those sisters who, may Allah bless you all, have worked on your prayers and you get your five daily prayers done. How do you improve your khushu? How do you make sure that you're fully focused for five minutes, worshipping your Lord, glorifying him and praising him? I'm sure other sisters will want to know as well. And those who are still struggling, my advice to you is to just pray one salah today and then one salah this week and then next week start another and then just keep adding on just keep adding on until you got you get all your five salah going and just keep going because remember salah is the first thing that we're going to be asked about salah is the first thing we're going to be asked about you don't want your lord to ask you how was your salah and you're like eh. no you want to be proud and say ya allah my salah was good i did my best you know, you want to say that to your Lord. You do not want to disappoint yourself and you do not want to disappoint your Lord. So fight it. Push yourself. Maybe surround yourself with people who already have their salah going strong. You know, talk to them and ask them for your tips on how they are able to pray their five daily prayer. Ask them for tips. Spend time with them. Maybe start going to the masjid. And I'm sure you know, people are homobaric. Allah has blessed them you know um with masjids around them people who live in um, different parts of the world where whenever it's salah time they can hear the azan you start to find a way to say you know what i'm going to go to the masjid even if you don't want to go to the masjid or force yourself to the bathroom and literally make wudu and pray just pray no matter what you're doing you're sinning pray you're doing any kind of thing no matter what just pray because prayer will definitely change the heart and then as time goes on you're going to start thinking i want to be la i don't want to be doing this no more i want to pray to my lord i want to worship my lord and it will definitely work it will definitely work as long as you're sincere because you, remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he does not change the condition of a person unless they change what is within themselves so you need to work towards that change you need to work towards improving yourself for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for you you can't just sit there and be like, okay, I'm struggling with my salah, so I don't know what to do. No, sis, you have to get up and start working. That's what I'm saying. Make that little effort. If it's one salah today, two salah today, get it going. Okay? And Allah can see your efforts and Allah will help you make it three, make it four, and eventually your five daily salah.
so that's all i have to say sisters you know i really love you guys being here i really genuinely do thank you so much for helping me grow this community and you guys mean so much to me i hope you guys know that i'm letting you guys know that and we are all gonna grow together okay so if you're struggling with your, your salah write down what you're struggling with and i'm sure someone's gonna see your comment and they're gonna advise you and i'll try to advise you with whatever else i can advise you with inshallah and um ask people to make dua for you ask your parents to make dua for you you know the parents the dua of the parents allah accepts those dua talk to them i'm really struggling with my salah please make dua for me they will make dua for you all right sisters thank you so much for listening and thank you for being part of this community if you haven't subscribed yet please sisters please subscribe i want you guys to be part of this community i really do please like and share and um inshallah ta'ala i will see you guys in my next video inshallah assalamu alaikum